Hi comic book fans and welcome to another suddenlycomics.com video and today it's another in my series of The Comic Detective um, in which I look, generally look at an Alan Class comic to find out what gems are hidden in it and today uh, we are going to be looking at Sinister Tales number 70, okay? Now, what is fun about this one is that uh, this reproduces uh, the whole of uh, Flash Gordon number four, um, which I also have a copy of. Ta-da! Okay, so um, this should be fun because uh, this has got three little stories in it, two Flash Gordon stories and a spy story. And um, of course, this is the original King comic and it's in colour. And here we have um, Sinister Tales number 70, which reproduces all three of the stories in that, uh, in that King comics, uh, Flash Gordon number four, uh, but they're in black and white. Um, obviously the cover is in colour, uh, but it also has some additional stories in it, uh, which we are going to investigate. Hold on. So, this is an interesting uh, comic detective. So, um, as I've just shown you, there is my cover from uh, King Comics number four, Flash Gordon, with great artwork by Al Williamson. Um, Al Williamson, um, one of, in my view, one of the greatest comic artists. Uh, he picked up the mantle of drawing Flash Gordon from a guy called Alex Raymond. Alex Raymond was the first artist uh, and creator of Flash Gordon, but he died tragically young. Um, Al Williamson uh, was inspired by uh, Alex Raymond's art on Flash Gordon when he was a youngster. And then later in his life, he picked up as being the main artist for Flash Gordon. Um, I mean, Flash Gordon has got a huge history um, appearing in virtually every type of media over a period of 80 years, 70 or 80 years. Um, I have done a video about Flash Gordon. It was one of my earliest YouTube videos, um, so the quality isn't as uh, as good as um, it currently is, but I still think it's worth a watch, and I'm going to put a link below to my video about Flash Gordon. Anyway, there is the cover of Flash Gordon. Is the cover of Alan Class's Sinister Tales. Now, the Flash Gordon was published in uh, March 1967. Now, I think this Sinister Tales is 1969 or 1970. So probably about two years after the original came out. And if we look at this, the colours are a bit brighter and a bit bolder on um, the Sinister Tales than they are on the original Flash Gordon. This may, of course, just be that my copy's faded, uh, so a bit difficult to tell. Um, right, let's have a look at some of the internal artwork here. So, as I said before, there are two Flash Gordon stories and a spy story. So, this is the uh, first story we've got, Flash Gordon and the Centuries of Dark Mountain. We've got Flash, Dale Arden, his love interest, and Dr. Zarkov, his sort of uh, travelling companion. And this, as you can see, is in colour. So this is from the uh, Flash Gordon number four. And here I've got the same panel from uh, Sinister Tales 70 uh, in black and white. Now, I actually think I prefer the black and white. You know, Al Williamson's artwork really does work well in black and white. Anyway, make your own mind up. You're going to see quite a few of the colour versus black and white comparisons um, in this video. Okay, now, 
Another thing worth pointing out here, this says Al Williamson, who's the artist, and Archie Goodwin, who is the writer. Now, Al Williamson and Archie Goodwin uh, work together quite a lot. Um, Archie Goodwin was the editor-in-chief and main writer at uh, Warren Comics um, Eerie and Creepy for about three years, I think about 1964 to 1967. And Al Williamson worked with Archie Goodwin and was a big contributor to both uh, Creepy and Eerie. Now this is, I think, 67, so it's either just at the end of the time at, um, at uh, Warren or um, uh, after it, just after it. Um, okay, so there we have, uh, that's the beginning of that story. Here is the last page of that story. Here we have the colour version and here we have the black and white version and, and Al's signed his signature again. He, and Al Williamson does like signing his signature on these artwork, which is great. Right, uh, then we get a second story, Flash Gordon in the Lost Continent of Mongo. I mean, look at this. It really is lovely artwork. Um, this is 1967 and this is sort of classic 1967 futuristic artwork. Um, there's the colour version. Here's the black and white version. Yeah, you decide which you prefer. Um, here's the last page from this story and here we've got appearing Ming the Merciless. Uh, who is uh, Flash Gordon's nemesis. Um, and uh, we've got a lovely picture here of uh, Dale Arlen giving Flash her hero a cuddle. And here is the same thing in black and white. Right, the third story um, in Flash Gordon number 14 is uh, Secret Agent X9. Uh, this is another Alex Raymond uh, sort of uh, character that uh, Al Williamson uh, picked up and here again we've got Williamson and Goodwin uh, partnering up. Um, this is a sort of James Bond type character you can see in here doing martial arts um, and there is the black and white version. The last page from this story um, I mean, just look here, this is great work by, um, sorry, signed this one again. Look at this, the detail of going into this, this little jade dragon. And look at this, even the, the sort of um, patterns on the dress, amazing work. And also this uh, Chinese junk here, you know, he's in the aeroplane here and he's flying over the sea and there's a Chinese junk and just look at the detail that um, William put, Williamson's putting into his work here. Here's the same thing in black and white. Brilliant. Okay so um, that was all the that was that was effectively the whole content of Flash Gordon um, number four. However of Alan being Alan, we've got a lot more content in the Sinister Tales. And uh, we've got some more famous uh, comic writers and artists appearing in here. Down here, you can see the name Don Heck. One of the, one of the big names of uh, Silver Age comics. And this is, uh, this is The Witching Hour. Uh, it's from Journey into Mystery number 84 um, from 1962. So, um, you know, this was a this was a um, an Atlas stroke Marvel uh, comic. Uh, so the story was probably by Stan Lee or Larry Lieber, but it doesn't say. OK, what else have we got in this little gem of a comic? Well, here we go. Look at this. This is The Changeling by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. 
Um, this is from Journey into Mystery 86, um, also from uh, 1962. Uh, this is a super little story, typical of the uh, typical of this sort of uh, comic. You know, it's uh, there's a there's a king. Uh, he's a bit of an evil guy. He's pretty ugly, and he tells his wizard that he wants he he needs to convert him and change him into the most handsome male in the land. Um, well, you you've got to be a bit careful with wizards um, because the the wizard turns him into the most handsome and good-looking swan in the whole land. You know, you've got to be careful with these uh, sort of wily, wily wizards. So there we go. Um, <clears throat> Steve Ditko artwork, Stan Lee story. Next up, who haven't we seen yet? Ah, it's Jack Kirby. The strange fate of the statue maker. The artist here is Jack Kirby and um, probably Stan Lee or Larry Lieber writing the story. Um, uh, great stuff. Is there anybody else left that we haven't seen yet? Aha! Darkly Sees the Prophet starring Raven and Gil Kane. This is Story and Art by Gil Kane. Um, so we have had um, Al Williamson, Don Heck, Stan Lee, Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, and now Gil Kane. What a tremendous <laughs> lineup um, of uh, artists. The, the final story in here is uh, this one, The Fist of Zeus, and um, I'm not sure who the artist is here. The um, the comics database says it's somebody called George Tusker, who I'm not familiar with. So there we go. Sinister Tales number 70. What a cracking issue. Um, and uh, all available for one shilling. Enough said. <laughs>